I'm going to show you how to use the laser pitch gauge version 2. Uh, it's a lot easier than uh, it used to be. Uh, there's no adapter blocks. Same principle in that uh, if the swash plate's level, the blade grips aren't going to rotate. It's important you understand that uh, principle. The first thing we're going to do is install the laser pitch gauge in one of the blade grips. There are no adapter blocks, so there's nothing to lose. Pull the tab out. Uh, this is quite a bit different than uh, the previous instructions. So we're going to turn on the radio and we're going to put the uh, turn on the receiver. And if we've got a fly barless unit, you want to put it in a mode that eliminates the gyro. In 3GX, uh, that's DIR mode. Bataba, it'd be the swash set menu. Uh, Microbeast, I believe it's menu J, something that takes the gyro out of the picture. Now we're going to turn it, we've got the radio on, laser pitch gauge and blade grip. The link is on, and we're going to raise the swash plate until the mixing arms are level. Now if you've got a machine that has an adjustable follower block, uh, what you want to do is put the uh, anti-rotation in the center of its travel and then adjust the follower block down to its level. But this is uh, just to give us a little idea of where we want our dots or our marks to be. So we're going to mark that. We're going to readjust this later. Now remove a link from that blade grip that has the laser pitch gauge. You don't have to remove it completely, but it'll get it out of the way. And then take a small piece of painter's tape. In the videos before, I was using a pretty big piece. We want to use a small piece. And we want to line that up pretty close to where that mark is. And you can tweak it and then just kind of pinch between the grip and the head block. Okay, that's close enough. Now the first point we're going to mark is the, the rear. And what I've done, I've taken a piece of paper and put my marks on it. That way my hand doesn't get in the way when I'm marking. So I'm going to go to the back here. We're in my kitchen. My kitchen's pretty long. So I'm going to put a mark right in the center of that dot. And then... We're going to rotate 120 degrees. We're going to line up the inner ball with the outer ball. And we're going to mark this point over here. And we're going to return to our original point. And we'll adjust that. Now we'll come all the way around and make sure that our mark is exactly over the original, and that's good. Now hook the link back up. And remove the tape. Not necessarily in that order. You remove the tape. That's now go to the back. And the reason I use the back is usually when we're setting up the elevator link, we're pretty careful. But all these links are made according to the manual. 
All right, we're going to raise the uh, dot until it's right on that mark. Very sensitive back there. All right, we're on the mark. We're going to come here. And we're going to use sub trim or adjust our control rods depending on whether we're happy with the uh, way the control arms look. If they're level, I would go ahead and use a control rod adjustment. But for this demonstration, we're going to use sub trim. Now, this is channel two. So we're going to adjust channel two. And we're going to put that right on the mark. We're going to go over here. And this is channel six. And we're going to put that one right on the mark. We're going to go to the back. And we're going to raise this, put it back on the mark. We're going to come here. That's still on. If this is still on, it'll be a miracle. That's. That's right on. So we know this swash plate now is level. When the mark or when the laser travels over all three marks, the swash plate's level. Now we can check for interaction at the low swash plate position. I've made a another control arm. It's longer for the low position and shorter for the high position. We'll pop the we'll pop the low one on there. This is the longer rod. And you see now we can lower the swash plate until that's right over the mark. And then rotate it around in it. Now, you see, we're a little bit low over here, so what we can use is a collective to aileron mixing to raise that dot. Pretty good right there. We could use just a little bit. We're going to put it right right on that dot in the back. Always use the collective to adjust this one. And we're going to check it again. Just for grams. It's about an eighth inch high. That's about a tenth of a degree at this distance. And same here. So we've got just the tiniest bit of interaction. It's probably not even worth fixing. You'd probably want to test fly the model and see if that's showing up in the flying. But if you're getting a big change, you definitely want to use some uh, collective to aileron or collective to channel 6 mix. Now we're going to pop a shorter link on and check the swash plate at high. Put it on right there, but really where, where we want to adjust it is in the back. It's right on in the back. And this is the swash plates as high as it's going to be during the, its travel. We're off just a tiny, tiny bit right there. 
which can be mixed out, it take about one or two percent of uh, mix, but it can be mixed out. And we're off about an eighth of an inch there. So that can be mixed out as well. And then we would go back to the rear, put it back on after we do the mix and make sure it's over, over all the points. And sometimes you, if you get a sticky link, you can kind of tap it a little bit and, and then check it again. And uh, that one came in about halfway just by tapping it. So I got a little bit of a sticky link issue there. But now our swash plate's level. Uh, we know we don't have any major interaction. If we do, we can... That's so close that a flight test would be probably the only way to get rid of that. Although, if you set it where it's right on the mark, almost guarantee you you're not going to have any interaction in flight. So that concludes that. Uh, now we can get on with setting the pitch.